What's up, YouTube? Simcella do here. So, I've been making Warband maps for some time now, and still across all the servers I've played on, there's very few mappers who go through the trouble of making their own terrain hash code. Uh, I don't know whether they just don't know how, or they don't care, or maybe they're just too lazy. But uh, creating your own hash code can really help you if you want to have more control over the output of the terrain. Uh, so you can make the vertices more dense, you can increase the terrain's overall size, you can also add procedural trees which seem to perform a little better than just the normal uh, editor place prop ones. So, and uh, Warband's ugly enough, so why not take the extra 10 minutes just to make it a little bit purtier. So uh, anyways, we're going to go in to the editor and we're going to screw up a vanilla Warband map. Um, we're just going to go in and switch out the terrain code for one of these stock ones. Uh, we'll do Turin, sure. So I'll load this up. And uh, we're loading this up right now to just move and save something so that it's easier to find in Windows Explorer. So just save anything, doesn't really matter. And you can exit back out. So now I go to Date Modified here. Scene 10 is Turin Castle. Uh, that's the label for in the code. So what we can do with this now, copy that in, and find it in the scenes.txt file, and that's right here inside the, the module folder, uh, right here. So, you open that up, just do control F to go find it really quick. So, this right here is the entry for Turin Castle in the code, the, the scene entry. But you can disregard all of this, except for the hash code right here. So this is this what creates the, the starting point for the landscape. So whenever you save something in the editor, you're saving your changes to this. Uh, so if you delete your SCO, uh, your SCO file, which is the actual map like prop file, um, it'll just go back straight to this. And so th this is permanent. So if you change this, it just gives you a foundation to build up on. So now that we have this, we can copy this and then go into our super awesome, easy to use terrain code generator. This is a hidden gem found online and makes everything that much easier. So, as you can see, you can just paste in your, your hash code here and it'll tell you. So this is the, the settings for Turin's uh, terrain. And so you can come in here and change all kinds of stuff. You can change vegetation, you can change the polygon size to something else. I'll change it to three meters, uh, shade occlude. Uh, we can add different types of seeds for all of this, uh, and we're going to change the x, y a bit more, make it huge, and sure, we'll change some of these other values as well. And you can see this keeps changing as you uh, adjust the sliders. So we've got something we want now, I guess. Who knows? It's pretty much guess and check with this. Copy that right back in. Paste it, and start up Warband. Uh, you have to close down Warband every time because it reads it when the game first starts, uh, unlike the actual SCO file, which you could change on the fly. So now we'll wait 10 years for Warband to actually load. Uh, and we should see what our new terrain looks like. And if it's horribly wrong, if it's like a completely different uh, environment, you just go back, close Warband, go back, try it again. Pretty much guess and check, like I said. Here we go. Open back the map. And now we'll see what we got. So, where'd the castle go? Okay, there it is, yeah. So let's just spawn in and we can run around and see what we're working with. Oh, the spawns are still working, that's good. And let's get outside the castle. So, as you can see the terrain is much bigger than it was. And sometimes whenever you change the, uh, the height, you'll end up completely overlapping what was left on the scene. Or like this one, it's still floating above it because it was lower. So what you can do is just select everything like I'm doing now and just move it all back down or adjust it to wherever you want it to be. And then your work will be set in front of you because you'll have to do a lot of elevation tweaking to get everything to fit back right. You have to go in here and smooth it all out and do all that kind of stuff, which you should already know. Uh, there are a couple of problems with doing it this way. 
In fact, I can even show you a little bit. So you see this black band that's around the two corners of the map. Sometimes, whenever the original SCO file has uh, ground color painted on it, it'll remember that that color was painted onto the terrain. But since you're using different XY values on here, it doesn't know where to place that. And so it's basically remembering where the edge of the original terrain was. And this is permanent. You cannot remove this. If, even if I go in here and try to remove all of it, watch this. We'll save. Reload the map. It'll just come right back. It's permanent, you know. If you use ground color paint, you're going to have a bad time. So it's completely immovable or uh, unremovable. And you can see the, uh, the area is all still blackened. Um, that's just permanent. Uh, that's one of the issues. The other issue is instead of it being um, the ground paint color, uh, you'll instead have the procedural train in the background or in the, 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 the back, you know, outer reaches of the map, and then the original terrain will just be kind of sliced into it. Uh, and those those values are also uneditable, so the only way to do it is to tweak your XY values back on the generator. So if these are all the way up too high, chances are you're probably going to screw up uh, the terrain and it's going to have giant slices down the middle. The only way to fix that is by either decreasing it by, you know, maybe to 85, 75%, or you could use the part that you can actually save onto, which is the original terrain, and just kind of smooth it into it as best you can and kind of hide it or cover it up. Uh, let's see. But that's that's pretty much it. Um, you can make all kinds of things. If you want to completely get around the school values, the best way to start is not to start with an old vanilla map. Uh, you should always just start with your own props. Uh, and just make your own map from scratch because you'll run into all these kind of issues if you're trying to convert an old vanilla map onto a multiplayer type. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just shove it up your comments section. Take care.